الرحمن الرحيم and welcome to our new lecture and summary translation course today's lecture will be about economic translation and we're going to find an answer for these four main questions number one what is economics two why is translating economic text demanding three how to use dictionaries to translate economic text? And the last question, do economic texts use metaphors? So, in this video, we're going to find an answer for these four main questions. First, what is economics? Economics is a discipline that is related to the study of production and consumption as well as a transfer of wealth. It's subdivided into two types which are microeconomics and macroeconomics. And if you remember the roots of the words micro refer to the small things however macro refers to the bigger things. So microeconomics deal with industries and economic activities on the individual level. However macroeconomics is the study of the economics of the entire country or the international market and this is why macroeconomics is broader than microeconomics now why is translating economic text demanding translating economic text is demanding since translators must stick to the information in the source language the whole document should be translated without leaving anything out. If you remember when we talk about the translation of literary text, we or I said that the translators of literary text has, has some kind of flexibility. He can add, delete, manipulate, or let's say they can, let's say, play with the text, play with the text. However, this kind of flexibility is not found or, or is not given to economic translators. Why? Because everything must be translated. Figures, numbers, and ex for example, should be given utmost attention. And no new numbers should be added, changed, or removed. One number which may be added could lead to like disastrous results. So, Economic translators have to be accurate as much as they can. Here is an extract from our book, an extract for economic text. And if you notice here some, let's say, phrases, for example, paper notes. The general mean, uh, meaning or translation of paper, it's waraq and notes mulahabat, right? But in the economic translation or economic context, it's translated as awraq maqdiya. Notes are translated as awraq. Paper, let's say naqdiya. However, in bank notes, here notes is, is translated as awraq, again, bank masrifiya. So be careful that the some words are not translated literally. They have a specific translation and economic text. They have specific translation and economic text. I'm gonna like tackle or discuss with you, for example, let's say this phrase, POC entry. Suppose that I ask you to translate this text. And you come across this phrase, book entry. So, I'm gonna like show you how to go and search for the translation using different dictionaries. If you go to Google and write book entry, Google will give you the whole kitab translation, which is totally far away from the original or the accurate meaning so i'm gonna give you another uh, dictionary 
which is very let's say helpful in translating specific genres its name is al maani dictionary yes let's click on it what is distinguished about al maani dictionary is that it provides you or sorry it's, it provides you different translations according to different genres for example it tells you that it tells you that uh, sorry it tells you that this translation for legal economic religious general translation so let me choose here here oh i miss arabic english it's chosen here okay i'm gonna write book entry here book entry yes let me see the results here it said to you that it's malia طبعاً malia is a is يعني it's an integral part of economic uh, text or economic context here for example it's قانونيه and let's see in malia book entry means قيد دفتري يبقى في انا computerized يعني لحالها هي بتصير قيد دفتري او قيد دفتر او قيد محاسبي there are other translations for example in uh, legal context etc and it also like provide you with other let's say phrases for example book of final entry daftar qaid nihai book of original entry daftar qaid al awwal etc now there are or there is another let's say um dictionary that provides more context its name is reversal context here let me use it yes Let me write here book. What is distinguished about this dictionary that it like provide provides you with different contexts having different contexts having the this source utterance. Here Book Entry Securities الأوراق المالية الدفترية Book Entry Settlements التسويات Like it, it provides you with more context الدفترية المحاسبية Again like here قيد محاسبي They are close to each other They are close to each other One of you may ask me Don't you feel that دفت قيد دفتري is different from دفترية well I want to tell you that some terms in economic let's say uh, genre uh, or let's say manipulated or not manipulated it's يعني the, the, the term itself may be used in another way For example here قيد دفتري مع كتر الاستخدام في كونتكست تانية بصير نحكي بدل قيد دفتري ممكن نشوفها الدفت الأوراق المالية الدفترية فأي حدا ممكن يشوف دفترية هو مباشرة حيعرف إنها قيد دفتري قيد دفتري يعني في بعض الترجمات ممكن أنا ألاقيها كلمة دفترية طب if I want to be sure more and more يعني أنا شفت هنا في المعاني إنه book entry قيد دفتري وهنا يعني هيك جابها بشكل مختصر صارت عندي دفترية طب هنا مع كتر الاستخدام ممكن بعض المترجمين تصير الكلمات الشائعة عندهم خلص يختصروا فيها طب هنا ما بقدر أنا كمترجم أولي يعني أروح كلمات أتلاعب فيها وأختصر فيها to be more and more sure I can go to google and ask him what is the meaning what is the meaning of book entry let me use the meaning in, in the Cambridge English dictionary it says to me that it's a record of each amount of money spent or received in company's account which is like um, sorry Yeah, which is a definition for this word, which is قيد دفتري. 
Now to make things more clear, I'm gonna give you another explanation. Again, one may ask me, here it's qaid daftari. Tab, why here it's daftariya? The, the answer will be here, a new, a new logism. What is a new logism? A new logism is considered as one of the most challenges for translators of economic texts. It's defined as newly coined lexical units or existing lexical units. يعني إما جديدة أو already كانت موجودة. يعني هي بالأصل هنا كانت قيد دفتري. ما قتل الاستخدام صارت دفترية. وهذا أنا بسميه نيولوجيزم. نيولي coined lexical units or existing lexical units that acquire a new sense. يعني لو أنا بدي أحكي بشكل عام دفترية. ممكن حد يحكي لي شو دفترية. لو بدي أحكيها بشكل عام بالسنس العام. ولكن بال الكلمة هذه تتضمن معنى في الجانرا الخاصة بها لما أنا بحكيها بالإكرامك تكست بحكيها لشخص عالم اقتصاد رح يفهم أنا شو بعني كلمة دفترية The new terms are continuously being created دائما في السياق القانوني في كلمات جديدة عندي and translators often cannot find available translations for them so they have to come up with their طبعا we are let's say as beginners may not be able to bring up our own translations right but let's say those who are experienced in economic uh, translation can bring or can provide us with new translations and like by time those new translations will be very common to use in economic text Newmark proposes 12 types of neologisms and different translation strategies for each type. The first referred to an existing lexical items. يعني already موجود ولكن بيصير في تعديل عليه. But with a new sense. But with a new sense. Again, لما أنا أحكي أنا دفترية. دفترية ممكن لما حد يسمعني يا دفترية يمكن يجي عباله كلمة دفتر. مثلا دفتر الطالب. شو دفترية but here the word دفترية in economic text has a new sense which is like the record in which like the amounts uh, is recorded etc okay now translating strategies suggested for him include transference طبعا لي transference أنا بقصد فيه اللي هي موضوع البروينج عسبيل المثال هنا في عندي كلمة يورانيوم أكسيد في عندي صار ترانسفرنس هنا أكسيد اليورانيوم مع بعض التعديلات في اللفظ بدل أكسيد أكسيد اليورانيوم ضفت الأل سو so هنا هنا بسميها دي ترانسفرنس بمعنى البروينج أوكي سو أم other let's say um, new terms like could be new coinages يعني كلمات مش كلمة أصلها وصار فيها تعديل يعني مثلا سجل دفت uh, سجل هنا like مثلا قيد دفتري وصارت دفترية لا بصير كلمة جديدة من الأصل uh, derived words اشتقاقات abbreviations اختصارات collocations eponyms Phrasal words, transferred words, acronyms, etc. Let me here discuss with you the word foreign origin. If you translated it literally, foreign means Ajnabi origin, like al asl, right? Original asli. Now, if you Google this word foreign Ajnabi, it will be asl Ajnabi. But let's let's say search in Al-Ma'ani dictionary Al-Ma'ani tells me that goods for example of foreign origin سلع أجنبية المنشا هي مالية طبعا مالية like could be اقتصادية or economic let's say a genre foreign origin here in in the, in the legal in the legal genre that the best translation is أصل أجنبي and this is what again is distinguished about this um, dictionary origin pricing تسعير على أساس هنا في FOP okay so here if you want to like to know more context or more phrases using the word origin
Now let me ask you, um, do you think that Google Translation is not accurate all the times? Well, let me search these two, let's say, translation using Google. The first one is paper notes here. Let me write paper notes. Let me see the translation. It's Amulahadat al which is not correct. Okay, let me, let's say, check this translation, bank notes. And be careful that the translation will differ if you put space here between bank and notes because here, Yanina, it's considered as a blended word. Let me write instead of paper here. It's bank, but I'm gonna, let's say, delete this space. So here it's awrak, naqdiya or masrifiya, taban, naqdiya or masrifiya, both are right. So uh, I cannot generalize that Google translation is bad all the time. So how can I be sure that it's, it's good or it's like accurate translation? You can go, for example, to another dictionary, bank notes here, for example, awrak maliya. So if, it, if the translation is repeated here, awrak naqdiya or maliya, So, uh, again, I just want to um, comment in the things that I had previously said. Bank notes translation in Google here is not accurate. Bank notes is not accurate. It shows me that it's awrak naqdiya. Awrak naqdiya is for paper notes. Paper notes, not bank notes. Paper notes, awrak naqdiya. However, bank notes, awrak masrifiya. So, the translation here is not accurate. Awrak naqdiya should be for paper notes. For more details about these two concepts, paper notes and bank notes, um, uh, I will um, upload a, an external a video to know more about the definition of each term paper notes and bank notes and again notice here that google uh, does not provide the exact translation for both terms now suppose that i ask you to translate a text in which for example uh, these terms are in the text let's focus on the word al istihlak al adi let me use or first show you how google will provide us or will translate it normal consumption do you think that this is the accurate translation? Okay, let me use reversal context translation. Uh, sorry, dictionary. For example, here. Okay, typical consumption here. Typical, the first translation here, typical consumption again here it's typical consumption well here it's normal consumption what do you think like is the accurate translation it's not found here maybe because I'm boring I'll stop let me remove it it's not found here in what And Almani dictionary. So here you are between two choices whether to choose normal consumption and typical, consum uh, typical consumption. I'm gonna let's say I'll tell you something when you do not know how or which is the best translation, go to Google and write normal consumption. Bizarre, Hindi, Hindi, Majmoot, Al Khayarat, Al Fiha, Al Kilma, Hadi. تمام طبعا هنا في اول واحدة بس كان فيها normal consumption الباقيات ما فيهم فبنطلع هنا على الكلمات البولد يعني ما الكلام هاي مش مستخدم يعني بس موقع واحد من بين يعني اكتر من عشر صفحات طبعا انا بطلع على الكلمات البولد شايفين الكلمات البولد هنا بس normal اجتني في اول اول خيار هنا ما في شيء ما 
مفيش طب خلينا اكتب تيبيكال كونسبشن اشوف مين الكلمة اللي بتستخدم تيبيكال تيبيكال كونسبشن هنا هنا كمان تيبيكال كونسبشن كل المواد تيبيكال كونسبشن هي كونسبشن so here again we have let's say typical public building energy so I think that we found more results for the typical consumption phrase let me use like this website to know what is found and typical domestic consumption values here are when I go and Google, sorry, when I go and Google, um, like the results of translation, يعني أعطاني ترجمة وأنا مش متأكدة إذا هل هي فعلا مستخدمة، يعني هنا أنا لما كتبت الاستهلاك العادي أعطاني typical consumption، طب أنا كيف بقدر أتأكد؟ بروح على جوجل بكتب typical consumption، بيطلع لي تعريفات إنه آه في typical consumption وهي تعريفاتها، وبالتالي بتأكد إنه أنا ترجمتي صحيحة، طبعا النورمال رح أرجع تاني عشان أشوف شو طلع لي بالنورمال نتأكد طلع لي أول القاموس بس موجودة هي بالقاموس طبعا هنا ما فيش نورمال كونسبشن ما فيش هنا بس طلعت لي بالقاموس نورمال بمعنى ريجولار ما فيش إشي اسمه نورمال كونسبشن تمام فهذه هذه الطريقة للتأكد إنه ترجمتنا موجودة في تارجت تكست بعد ما أنا أحصل على أكثر من ترجمة وما أعرف طب هي أنا أتبع جوجل وأكتب الاستهلاك العادي ولا أتبع ريفرسو كونتكست وأكتب تيبيكال كونسبشن هنا أقصد نورمال كونسبشن وهنا أكتب ولا أكتب هنا تيبيكال وبروح على جوجل بأكتب كتبت أول مرة نورمال ما طلع لي هنا كلمة نورمال كونسبشن ما طلعت لي بالمرة هنا لما كتبت نورمال بس طلعت لي أول خيال في القاموس ضغط عليه وكتب لي لكن لما انا كتبت تيبيكال هنا تاكدت انه هذه الكلمه عن جد موجوده في النص الاجنبي هنا ضغط على اول موقع وطلعت لي وات از تيبيكال كونسبشن تيبيكال انرجي سو هنا بتاكد ان انا ترجمتي صحيحه وانا بالطريقه الصح خلونا نترجم ليتس ترانسليت مبلغ التحمل فيرست ام جونا جوجل ات راح اروح على جوجل اند رايت ليتس سي مبلغ التحمل the amount of deductible well now I'm not sure if it's suppose that you are not sure that if is it if it is the right translation or not so so I go to the other dictionary reverse reverse of context and I write مبلغ التحمل afford it for the money doesn't seem the, the, the right translation. So in this case, what shall I do? Like, I want to be sure that this is the accurate translation. Let's go to Google and write ترجمة مبلغ التحمل in Arabic. We have many here, many, let's say, results. One, two, three. Here, مبلغ التحمل. Let me check or click on this link in this video I'm, I'm giving you let's say um, the ways how you can find the accurate translation for new words you have not let's say um, seen before so for example let me check these words here deductions الاقتطاعات between brackets مبلغ التحمل طب how can I like how, I want to be sure that this is the final translation كيف أنا بقدر أتأكد إنه هذه فعلا أنسب ترجمة بدنا نعمل إشي بنسميه back translation شو يعني back translation أروح أترجم الاقتطاعات عشان أتأكد is it the right translation بسميها هذه الاستراتيجية back translation deductions هنا طمنت آه فعلا طب أروح على مثلا المعاني آه كتبت انا اقتطاعات 
قاطع تقطيعة المعاني هنا ما فدنيش ما فيش شيء شيء طيب اروح على ريفورس هنا المعاني ما فادني على فكرة وهي يعني معلومة انه مش دايما كل القواميس بتعطيني الترجمة اللي انا بدي اياها هنا الاقتطاعات في ترجمات الى كاتس ديدكشنز هنا شفتها ديدكشنز الباك ترانسليشن في جوجل وفي ريفرس وبطمن انا انه اي كان ترانسليت قطاع اللي هي شو اسمها هنا مبلغ التحمل از ديدكشنز اوكي سو هنا ممكن استخدم الباك ترانسليشن يعني اشوف ترجمه وارجع اترجمها بقاموس ثاني حتى اتاكد انه is it really the right translation or not so here we are going to find an answer for the last question which was do economic texts use metaphor and the answer is yes they do use metaphor economic discourse makes use of metaphors metaphors used in economic texts are classified into three types they are let me use just another color here okay the first one is let's say is used for textual decoration or illustration that is referred to as image metaphors for decoration and illustration the second type is generic level which occurs only in the language يعني بكون بالاستخدام العام شرط يكون بالاستخدام it's economic context the third type is specific level metaphor which used to explain specific economic problems so it's related to economic genre not used at generic level طب how let's say to translate these metaphors there are following strategies or the following strategies are suggested to translate metaphor the first one is using an exact equivalent of the original metaphor and if you remember when we talked last time that sometimes we can translate a metaphor literally and we can find or we can achieve the meaning when we, if you remember when we say about uh, we translated it literally and we we get let's say uh, we can achieve the intended meaning. Two, using another metaphorical phrase which would express a similar sense. Number three, replacing an untranslatable metaphor of the original with its approximate literal phrase. Usually, this is the last choice. If you have a very difficult, complicated metaphor which you cannot translate or to which you cannot find a target equivalent metaphor for so search for a paraphrase for this metaphor with approximate literal paraphrase so at the end of our uh, lecture today um, I will ask you to identify the metaphors in the following experts from an article in the economist okay this is the article and I'll ask you to provide me the trans to provide me the translation of this Arabic text and this text now both sorry both texts are from the same texts they are extracts from the same text thank you for watching and see you in other videos